Hello everybody and welcome to the StarCraft 2 EVO mod. We've got Protoss versus Terran Mini versus a barcode player and I finally decided to do a cast of this myself. I've been watching a whole bunch of these StarCraft EVO mod casts and show matches that have been going on recently and I tr tried checking out the game myself as well but I was having a hard time finding any replays and just recently I got a little pack from Artosis so shout out to him for sending me and uh, keeping me in the loop here um, we're gonna be checking out this game with Mini who is a extremely good Brood War player if you guys don't know me um, if you're new to the channel I'm a Starcraft 1 commentator that's just what I do Brood War uh, day in and day out I cast the KCM and other uh, pro games so this is not my general wheelhouse. I'm not a StarCraft 2 guy. Um, I've been playing this a little bit recently uh, just because it is kind of the hot thing right now. It's kind of interesting to check out. And I mean, it's crazy. It's wild. Uh, I can understand why people are into it. And checking it out is really reminding me a lot of Wings of Liberty when it first came out. Everything feels very familiar. Uh, there's a lot of things that I recognize, but there's so much here to learn in terms of balance and, and the way that the, the races play and the strategies that can occur. Um, plus, I don't really know a lot of the StarCraft 2 units because I've been out of the loop on StarCraft 2 for so long. I haven't really played in years. I popped open the StarCraft 2 client uh, to play the game to try the mod and I hadn't opened it for seven years so it's been a really really long time I'm totally not used to uh, casting or watching replays in this at all so forgive me if I uh, make some mistakes I covered up this I figured out how to cover up the game timer at least so we've got that figured out at the bare minimum but from the games that I've played, guys, Protoss is the strongest race in Brood War, and there's absolutely no surprise there. Protoss is so insanely strong, and the only thing that really held them back in Brood War, I feel, is a, a lot of the, the jankiness with the controls and uh, the unit movement, right? Reaver Scarabs, Dragoons being hard to control, those type of things are what really held back um, the Brood War Protoss. It wasn't so much, you know, the ability to macro, that type of thing, which uh, is greatly improved in StarCraft 2. But for example, like the control with Vultures has been mostly removed uh, in this mod. So it's really hard to like flick your Vultures or do any sort of like patrol micro. I think they were talking about fixing that. I saw an announcement that maybe they had some sort of fix for that recently, but Things like that, things like Mutalis Control, they don't really exist in this mod, which makes it very hard for some of the other races. Protoss, Brood War Protoss is, is just really, really strong though, from what I've seen. And we're gonna see, of course, immediate tech here into Reaver out of Mini. Um, I don't really know what uh, the barcode Terran is doing here. I guess he's going for a Cyclone. I think those things lock on. Um, I've watched a few GSLs over the years, just uh, usually check check out the finals or the semi-finals and see what's going on, kind of keep in the loop. I used to watch all the time, but I fell off after uh, Heart of the Swarm. I just didn't really find it that interesting anymore, unfortunately. But I know what a few of these units are. I know this is the Reaper. Of course, it was absolutely the most ridiculous unit. It's super, super strong in uh, this mod as well against Zerg because you just don't have any early units. But as you can see versus Protoss, you've got the Dragoon. The Dragoon is a great catch-all unit for just dealing with anything that happens to come across from your opponent. And we're going to have a drop here. The early Medivac drop into the main base is going to come in. Let's see what kind of damage this can do because we already have some Zealots out and we've got the Reaver here. And look at that shot clearing out. Uh, quite a few of these Marines. Looks like the Marines will redrop here. And I guess you can dodge the shot. I didn't really think about this before. 
but I suppose you can just dodge the shot from the Reaver if you keep picking up the Marines over and over. He kind of missed it there. Um, understandable. He gets a couple probes, and the Medivac going to go and hide and be pesky here in the back. Oh, Cyclones come into the front as well. Nice shot there from the Reaver. As you can see, the Reaver just... It just works. It's like Todd Howard, man. It just works. And... Um, it clears out those... Uh, Cyclones pretty darn well. Keeping that shuttle alive. Kind of ridiculous here. What are we at? 11 HP? That is wild. Time to put maybe a cannon back here or something. Gonna leave one uh, dragon. Whoa, he almost killed that medevac. One more hit would have actually finished that up. Wait, 15 damage? I thought dragon should deal 20. Um, hmm, That must be a major change. They lowered the damage of the Dragoon. I actually didn't notice that before. But I guess they did go for that. I wonder what other things they've changed in terms of the damage numbers and stuff. Hopefully it requires some more balancing. Look at those Reaver Scarabs just catching up with everything. This is the StarCraft II um, engine at hard at work here. Oh, he's going to lose that shuttle for sure. Does get another Cyclone here though. Should get one more hit. Yeah, easy hit there. Wow, the Cyclone actually lived with 5 HP, but he killed a few more SCVs. In fact, 16 total SCVs. And so it going to work here. Picking off even more. 19, 20 SCVs have been killed now. That is insanity. Looks like we had a little bit of a push here with the Cyclones as well. Not really able to do much with that. Finally, that Zealot gets picked off. 21 kills here. Wow. Guess we've got a Raven over here and doing a little harassment duty. Eight kills on probes so far. Not bad. Overall probe count, I think, looking pretty good. Can we can we get it here? Units. 43 to 30. Pretty darn good. Although, again, we just we don't really know exactly how these two races are gonna stack up, right? Oh, Corsair brought out here. That's something you rarely ever see. A Corsair. I guess it's pretty good here. You have to build something to deal with the Raven. Dude, it takes forever to kill it. Oh my gosh. Three damage? I thought it was five. Oh, they really lowered a lot of the damage counts for the Brood War units. That's one thing I've been noticing a lot is that Brood War is really undertuned in this uh, overall game mode. This mod. I feel like they're they're way too weak. Um, and I guess you can see why. Like, a lot of the units have been lowered in their overall damage numbers. I didn't check that out before. When I was just playing, I wasn't really paying attention to the individual units' damage numbers. So, we've got an attack coming across the map here. We're going to look for a push. But at the same time, another Raven's going to come around and be annoying. Um, two Reavers here at that Watchtower. Zelnaga Tower. Um, pretty frustrating for a Terran player to deal with, of course. Can't actually see inside of there unless you throw down a, a scan or something. Uh, some more probes going to go down here. But Dragoons, again, the catch-all unit here. Just can run this down. Very nice beefy unit. Even with only 15 damage, still a great defensive unit. Uh, no matter what comes at you here. Reavers are going to get some good shots off. Very nice and great juggling here by many, many, a uh, consummate professional. Absolutely fantastic Brood War player. Oh, is he going to lose the Reaver here? Looks like he loses one of them. Second one going to go down. A couple of tank shots. And yeah, he's going to chase back these Dragoons as well. Looks like we're going to be able to take the center. And a third base is going to come down for... Our SE2 Terran. Another Reaver shuttle coming out here. Two more Reavers have already been produced. And that's something we've really noticed. Or I've really noticed anyway. Is that Brood War Terran just builds so many Reavers. Uh, they've realized just how strong they are in this mod. Um, with the pathing on the Scarab. It's just ridiculous how strong that they can be. And how much uh, value that you can glean from them. So, he's going to probably continue to make these Reavers throughout this game. 
We got a bunch of dragoons heading up towards the north. I'm not sure if he's going to attack into this. I don't see a whole lot of zealots right now. And usually what we'll do is we'll either get a bunch of shuttles and a few zealots, or we'll just have a massive amount of gateways with a just a giant number of zealots pouring out. And right as the zealot number starts to peak, that's when the attack will come in. Uh, you don't want to go unless you have a ton of zealots to actually soak up all the tank fire. Uh, because the dragons will not do very well against the tanks if they have to take them head on. And we've got three shuttles now. Let me go back to the... Um, what is this? Production tab? Do we not have production? There it is. It's like sending a bunch of shuttles northward. Is he going to go for a... Uh, poor man's recall here into the main. It seems like he will. This is a really common tactic for Protoss players in Brood War. He's going to send in the uh, Corsair to try and tank shots. He does actually tank a few hits there. Getting quite a big connections with those Reavers. The, uh... Oh! I didn't even think about this. What is this called? Cancel? No. Uh, disruption? I can't even remember what the hell that's called. Dude, this is really messing up the, the Reavers here. They're not able to attack for such a long time. Finally, uh, that runs out. The Reaver, or the the ability there. Shutting down the Reaver completely. And Dragoons are going to hit on this side at the same time. Reavers are still alive in the main, by the way. A lot has been cleaned up. He's going to go for the SCVs here in the mineral line. Oh, man, he could get such big damage. No. That will go down. But that was some sick damage. 19 kills here, dropping the supply by a lot. And now it has storms as well. Whoa. My bad, guys. Suddenly touching the, the keyboard here. A lot more zealots coming. I think he needs more gateways than this. What have we got? Yeah, that's not enough. I really don't think that's enough. We're going to have so much money here. Um, why not throw down like a million gateways? Uh, because it's so easy to macro. You can just put them all on one hotkey and just hold down the button. Just hold down the Z button. Make like 50 zealots at the same time. Super, super easy. You can see that even the pro players are not totally comfortable playing uh, in this new mod just yet. So it is a great time to, to get into it, to, to check it out. And I definitely encourage you guys to do so. If you want to check this out, it's very easy. Just go on to StarCraft 2 and the mod is already there. You can just uh, select it out of the mod list and you can make your own game and play with your friends. Very, very easy to do. There are also public games that open up every, every now and then. It's not super popular uh, from, what I, from what I've seen, but you can get a game. You can definitely get a game. Um, That's a massive drop moving around the bottom side right there. The shuttles are so big in this. They're just giants. They're going to move all the way around this side. They're like Arbiter sized. Truly. And we haven't actually seen an Arbiter. I don't think I've seen even one Arbiter um, so far in the Evo mod. Not even one time. Here comes that drop. The Reavers have already been take, uh, picked off, but the storms are here. Can he get a big storm on some of these SCVs? Well, he gets a pretty decent one, but, you know, that's not what he was looking for. Only got seven kills. Still a lot of zealots being dropped over here. Not bad. A nexus going on up uh, over at the top center there. Another storm going down on a bunch of these SCVs. And you can just see the power of the Brood War Protoss. Brood War Protoss, it just, it just works, like I said before. The units are just fantastic. They've got a lot of health. They're very, very tanky. And now that they just ma micro perfectly, and there's no, like, jankiness to the micro at all, it's so hard to stop them from just overwhelming you. And I think we're going to see that here. Even with all these tanks back here, not really a lot we can do. Wow, I can't even zoom out in this. Is that, is that real? I can't, I can't zoom out any farther than this. Even in Remastered, they figured this out. How is it not possible in uh, StarCraft 2? That's kind of wild to me. Um... I want to get a bigger view of what's going on with these fights, but 
Unfortunately, just can't really do that right here. Let's take a look at the income now. 58 workers still. Not bad. But the gateway count is getting insane. Yeah, we are starting to add on a lot more gateways. We're even going into carriers now too. And Brood War carriers are a lot better, I think, than the StarCraft 2 carriers. At least from what I've seen. Um, I think StarCraft 2 carriers are pretty decent, but... Brood War carriers are like another level. Whoa, we're going to fly right into a bunch of Valkyries here. And this is something I hadn't taken into consideration yet. How good are Valkyries versus carriers? They must be pretty darn good. Because the range is, is very, very big, right? If we've got a lot of Valkyries, they should be able to wipe out carriers pretty quickly. Um, without a big ground army to support them. And Thors are going to come up as well. So that we're going to get into a pretty interesting situation here with Thor's out. We don't have a lockdown or anything like that. That would have been interesting. That, that's actually going to be really interesting. Um, I get so many comments from people wondering why we never see lockdown in Brood War. But we might actually see it in this mod. The, the reason is, of course, because uh, lockdown is very hard to micro. Uh, but in this mod, you don't have to do a lot of difficult micro you can just select all your units and just press lockdown and then just hold shift and click everything you want to lock down and if you've got enough lockdown energy uh the ghost will just split all their lockdowns on everything it'll be like one for one on each unit you can just lock down an entire army really 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 fast so we'll see if brood war lockdown ever becomes a thing uh you know ghost lockdown from the brood war terran uh, I think it would be very, very strong against some of these, like, Protoss compositions, especially if they're going to uh, late game a carrier transition or something like that. Could be very, very good. Now, we've got three carriers out here. We're getting into some upgrades for these as well. Plus one is done already. Um, we're going to get plus two. Pretty oh, this is carrier capacity. I really thought that was attack, but whatever. Pretty good army here for the Terran. Pretty much maxed out as well. So Terran just kind of turtling back here. Getting ready for whatever the Protoss decides to bring out. And it's going to be, of course, a lot of carriers. We're going to get to like six, eight carriers, something like that. He actually needs to open up some, some space in his supply. So I think we're going to see a big attack come in here. He's going to want to try and attack this base, but Terran is very well placed right now. Sending out a little counterattack around the map, but the placement is really, really nice. Oh, that disruption matrix or something, whatever the hell it's called. He throws that down on some of the carriers. Great storms here. Storms just ruin these uh, Val or the Vikings, by the way. Now diving on top of the last few remaining carries, he gets another one. Pretty darn good. Pretty darn good. Oh, fire bats, blue flame hellions, or blue flame hell bats, actually. Dealing with quite a few probes. But the money is really insane right now for Mini. He's just got so much. And I think this is kind of Mini playing with his food a little bit. He's not quite sure what he wants to do uh, in this situation. I can't blame him. We're in uncharted territory right now. Late game TVP. Uh, when Protoss is Brood War, Brood War Protoss, it's, um, it is a little bit funny here. We definitely don't have to worry about Lockdown. By the way, Lockdown lasts for an insane amount of time, so I'm really looking forward to seeing that. Um, but we do have, you know, the Thor, we've got the, Va the, the Vikings, we've got Mines, and the... Ravens are going to give us... Oh, there it is. Interference Matrix. That's what it's called. So the Ravens are going to be like the X Factor here. We'll see what they can do uh, in the next big fight. Whether he can get good Interference Matrix on everything. And, you know, shut down some of these uh, carriers. Try to take a good engagement. Still maxed out. Um, Terran will have to take another base soon. I'm going to have to go ahead and take this base down here eventually. Kind of funny to see this outpost over here with a bunch of cannons all set up. Uh, carriers are going to start to push into the main base, though. Sensor tower here. 
Checking out everything. There's the uh, Vikings taking a pot shot. He can just heal up, though. He's built a couple of shield batteries here. Three shield batteries, in fact. That's a lot of healing for these carriers. Anytime one of the carriers gets low, you can just right-click on that to recover a whole bunch of shields. And the carriers are not doing the greatest, honestly. Uh, you can't really kite as well with the carriers uh, in this game as you could in Brood War. In Brood War, you can kind of leash the carriers. You, like, move forward and attack something. And then it, it, your carriers are in range. But as they move out of range, the interceptors will keep attacking until you get to a certain distance. Once you get to, like, over here, far out of range, then they'll return to the carrier. So leashing was a big thing in Brood War. It doesn't seem to be as much of a thing, though. Here in the Evo mod, a carrier gets picked off. And how many do we have left? Quite a few. Quite a few indeed. Lots of carriers to work with. And Terran is really being passive here. He's just sitting, waiting for a mistake, I feel. Waiting for Mini to go too ham on him. Or for him to sort of mine out and have to start taking bases closer to the Terran. Uh, he really doesn't seem to be interested in getting any farther forward here the mines are being set up we've got tanks just barely in range of some of these shield batteries They're gonna take this fight whoa a carrier just explodes great shots coming down here from the thors storms on a lot of this pretty great storms there he's actually targeting down some of the templar though and i think all the templar went down there uh, to the good targeting here of our barcode terran right as the templar were casting those storms he was just gunning them down immediately oh my god I apologize, guys. We are finally going to get Arbiters here. So Arbiters coming into play is exciting. Recall research. Oh, okay. That's for Arbiter Recall. I was like, isn't that a StarCraft 2 ability? But then I remembered. We've got Thors banging on the front doors here. Nexus. Just out of range of, a ta of a tanks over here and... Oh my goodness, I think we're going to go in the main. Now, this is a strategy that was really popular in Brood War, although we don't see it as much anymore. It used to be very popular. You go in, you fly in with the carriers, the interceptors draw all the fire, and then the shuttles will come in and land the troops. Uh, so you get kind of like a, a mini recall into the main base with a bunch of Templar and uh, Storms and that sort of thing. So... He does have these storms here, which makes it really hard to engage with the Val uh, with the Vikings. But as the tanks siege up and gun down, well, everything's going to get shoved back. That's for sure. A lot of carriers went down during that fight. We were like six, eight carriers there before. Uh, and now we're down to just three. So a lot of army has been picked off. Dropping to 160 supply. And we're even seeing battle cruisers now. A recall comes through. Wow. I didn't I did not expect that to be the the what's that called? Um That's a StarCraft 2 visual. I can't remember what that's called. The it's like a tornado. I remember back in StarCraft 2, Wings of Liberty or Heart of the Swarm days, I can't remember which one. You would make that tornado and it was like a they would call it like the toilet, flushing the toilet. And you just put a bunch of Archon. Archon Toilet. That's what it's called. You put a bunch of Archons in there. That was from the Mothership, if I remember correctly. And everything, as it pops out, would just die to all the splash from the Archons. It's a really, really dumb strategy. Could kill an entire 200-200 army. Um, just instantaneously with that. But one thing we haven't seen just yet is Dark Archons. And Dark Archons in StarCraft uh, 1 were fantastic. They were basically the counter to battle cruisers in the late game, and that's why we never saw Terran players really utilize battle cruisers in StarCraft 1 late game, is because they would just get mind controlled or feedbacked by uh, those Dark Archons. So we'll see if he ends up bringing that out here. I don't see any Dark Archons in production, so we might not see that. I, I actually haven't even seen a Dark Archon um, in this mod yet. I have not seen any games or done it myself to just see what a dark archon looks like so i'm excited to see what that might uh that model might actually be battle cruisers flying into the main and uh, battle cruisers in the main here are pretty pretty cheeky oh 
There's the um, stasis field here. Can just go ahead and throw those all on ice. Battlecruiser is going to take fights directly here with the carriers, but that's quite a few. He will be able to take that fight. Meanwhile, Thors are moving out, and the base in the bottom right has been taken here by Terran. A lot of turrets have come up as well. Look at how long this lasts. Isn't that ridiculous? Stace is just going on forever and ever and ever here. But eventually it will run out. And the army will be able to clear out these battle cruisers. How are we doing on minerals now? Still pretty good on minerals for the most part here for Protoss. I mean, we're running out in uh, three of our bases at least. So eventually we will need to see um, things progress here for Protoss. But for the time being, he's okay. He's going to push down here to the bottom right. Terran actually does need to come and save this base. Great storms on a lot of these SCVs. Kind of a cool load up there just to avoid the storm and then, you know, backing back out once again. Wow, Yamato doesn't even kill that. Um, Yamato cannon. I don't think it... I, does it kill one shot um, in StarCraft Brood War? I can't remember. That's so rare that you would ever see a Yamato cannon hit an Arbiter. I feel like it might be two hits, but I can't quite remember. It's a lot of stacked units right there. You don't want to be walking that stack into these Templar. Um, looks like he's going to try and move forward and take this space. This is a really long drawn out game here, but it's getting a little bit scary. Zealots are going to come in and take this fight. Stasis in the back line right there. Carrier is going to be backing everything up. Storms on everything. The Thors can weather the storms pretty well. And actually, BCs, did they just jump in on top of this stuff? I'm not sure about that. But only the carriers survive. And we still got a few Thors here, a few tanks. And he's starting to take this base. Oh, Battlecruiser's hopping over here. You know, Mato Cannon picking off that Nexus there is actually huge. This is one of the last mining bases here for... Mini, but Mini, I mean, he's going to kill these 100% now, right? Definitely, these all die. Oh, okay. He's got another jump. That's pretty badass. These are going to get away. And this base is going to be taken here. A lot of turrets being set up right now. Is Mini actually going to lose this game? It felt like he was in kind of an unlosable spot. And from a Brood War mentality, it was kind of unlosable. But here, StarCraft II Terran formidable in the late game that's for sure the thors really adding a lot of beef to the regular army um the the sort of starcraft one variant of the thor i guess would be the goliath it's just such a um what would you call it flimsy unit in comparison to the thor the thor is just so much stronger it has so much more health it can really handle a lot more damage from things like Storm and that kind of thing. He's actually not going to build another Nexus over here or what? That's kind of crazy. I guess just going to rely on long distance mining, realizing that we're going late here. Um, no point even putting that down. No point even making that, but... Um, coming into the main base, going to kill a few things. However, at the same time, the Thors are making their way forward here. Three, three Thors, not to be messed with. They are incredibly, incredibly strong. Whoa, BC is coming up, laying down a huge amount of Yamato cannon here. Look at that. That was the other big counter to the Battlecruiser was the Stasis. You could just Stasis half of the Battlecruiser army, fight the other half, and then once the first half unthaws, then you win the fight uh, with the entirety of your army so pretty nice stasis there from mini could have gotten the stasis before the amato cannon went down that would have been uh, even better here but hey it is what it is he gets the um, or he gets the uh, stasis he'll probably finish off all of these battle cruises unless they have the the warp jump just run away maybe they'll come over here and join this army which has really run through the majority of the bases here for mini He's gonna run away? Oh, really? He runs away from the battle cruisers here. Pretty shocked that he decided not to take that fight. We really do need a, a win here as Mini. Mini dropping a 120 supply, where 
I, I mean, our Terran is just exploded. He is so far ahead right now. That's a lot of mines, by the way. Moving over here. Oh, he's going to chase down the, the, the carriers here. Carriers are getting run down like dogs. Oh, you love to see it. Battle Cruise is actually being useful in this matchup. It never, ever happens, but there it is. Mini taps out, and Barcode Terran takes this game. SC2 is just so strong in this mod, guys. It is crazy to me. Um, I've played some games where I lost even playing as uh, StarCraft 2. Um, I don't play much StarCraft 2, though, so I, obviously I, I really don't know any strategies or any builds uh, in the modern era, but it's 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 not like an instant win, but man, is it strong. And you can just see, able to stand toe-to-toe -to -toe with late-game Protoss with a giant carrier army. You could never do this with uh, Brood War Terran. It's just not going to happen. You have to actually kill the Protoss before they get to this size army. Uh, that kind of late game, you know, seven base or six base. What are we on? One, two, three, four, five, six, I guess. Six base Protoss with this many carriers. Usually, uh, it's just not possible to take a fight with them efficiently in the late game. But as you can see here, StarCraft II Terran, it hits just a little bit different. The Dark Archon, we didn't get to see here. Uh, in this game, unfortunately. That would have been really cool. I I, I feel like that would have been the, the ultimate counter here. Uh, had Mini kind of realized what was going on, couldn't he have just made a whole bunch of Dark Archons and started mind-controlling Thors? Like, what, what, what do you do as Terran if I just start mind-controlling all your Thors? I, like, quickly mind-control three uh, battle cruisers and a Thor or two and then run them away or just let them fight and die and just keep backing up and doing that over and over again and force you to walk into storms to attack me. I feel like that would be probably a better winning scenario here from Mini, but um, we've got some more games to take a look at from the uh, SC2, SC1 mod. If you guys enjoy this type of cast, if you're interested in seeing more of this from me, make sure to leave a comment down below, guys. I'll definitely check out some more games if there's interest in it. Otherwise, I'll just keep doing Brutal War this is definitely out of my element, but again, it's fun to kind of, and also nostalgic to, to look at um, StarCraft 2 versus StarCraft 1 mod. It, it does really feel like Wings of Liberty where things are just not quite figured out yet. And even the pros are struggling to, to figure out what strategies work best and, and what are the actual right ways to play in this mod. Plus there's going to be updates and Things are going to change. Like I said, the Val or the Vulture has been updated recently. Uh, they changed it so it can be kind of flick microed a little bit so it can move and shoot at the same time. I'm sure they'll do some more things like maybe they'll change the uh, carriers so that you can leash the carriers a little bit better. Um, make these Brood War carriers a little bit stronger. Uh, what are some other things that they could change? Um... Yeah, I'm not sure. I'm not sure. I also, I'm not really sure about the overall balance in terms of how they change the, the damage numbers and stuff. It seems like they've changed a lot of these things. Like, um, I can't even remember what it, how much damage Interceptors do. But definitely changing the Dragoon is a huge, huge uh, switch up here. 18 damage with plus 2 attack. Oh, versus armor, 24. Okay. All right, that makes sense. So it was 20 um, before the two armor or two attack upgrade, but only versus armor. Uh, that makes sense, I guess. Yeah, it's it's strange how the armor types work here as well, right? Because in StarCraft 1, it was all about like the unit size. So like small unit, medium unit, uh, large unit, right? Rather than armor types, I think, is how the the game calculated damage. Like 50% damage, explosive shot. Uh, oh, yeah. The different types of shot was like explosive, um, concussive. Uh, there were a couple of others that I can't quite remember right now. But Dragoons did explosive shot and versus light, it did half damage. That's, that's how I remember it. And you can see here, it's kind of like explosive shot here versus armor. 
It's dealing full damage, or it's dealing even more than full damage, because it's 18 damage, but versus armor, it's 24. Um, and then half of that versus light, which is 12. Interesting. I'm I'm looking forward to, to checking more games like this out, guys. So let me know what you think in the comments down below. And I'll see you in the next video.